Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the virtual space of Boulder Public Library. My name is Terja Becker, and I'm here with my colleague, Gina Sosha. And we are mm -hmm. very excited today to introduce you to the three um, flagship products in our fabulous e-collections for accessing digital books, magazines, and movies. So we're hope we hope you're as excited about this as we are. Um, I wanted to start with just some housekeeping and some thank yous. I'd like to first of all thank our colleagues behind the scenes, Julian Ingram and Ann Ledford, for helping us with the technology and the chat today. And I would like to also thank our partners at the City of Boulder Older Adult Services, who are co-sponsoring and co-marketing this program for us. And we hope many of our older adults in our service area will, will benefit from using these collections and that this will be a useful program for you today. And finally, I would also like to thank the Boulder Library Foundation, who is a generous funder of this and almost all of the programming that you, the wonderful programming that you received through Boulder Public Library. So thank you now and always to the foundation as well. Um, I'd like to also start with telling you some things that you need to have in hand before you will be able to use any of the collections that Gina and I are going to talk about today. And the first of those items is, of course, your Boulder Public Library card. If you are a resident of Colorado, you can get a Boulder Public Library card. And if you are a resident of Boulder County, you can use all of the services that we're going to talk about today free of charge. So make sure before you go and do this that you have your valid library card and we can help you out with that online or live and in person here at the main library or at our Meadows branch, which is now also open for some limited uh, post COVID services. Uh, finally, you also need to uh, start with the library website and I will be showing you that site. It's boulderlibrary.org in just a moment. And um, you'll also start on a page called the download and stream page. And again, both Gina and I will be showing you where on the library homepage you can get to that, that site. Uh, questions can be asked at any time during this program by using the chat on either YouTube or the comment section on Facebook. So please feel free to post your questions as they occur to you. We will be answering as many questions as we have time for in the last few minutes of the program, last 15, 10, 15 minutes. So put those questions there and Gina and I will address them later. So never fear, we are here to answer those questions. And uh, for those of you who have questions arise after we're finished with our live presentation today, you can always ask them later through our Ask a Librarian service or by calling us. And those links will be posted at the end of the program as well. So. Don't feel like you need to take copious notes as we talk, uh, just watch along, absorb, and uh, put those questions in the chat or the comments as they occur to you and uh, rest assured that they will be answered, if not uh, during the course of the program, then at the end or even beyond. We're here for you all the time. That's part of what we do as, as librarians and part of what we love about our job. All right, so the, the service that I'm going to begin with today is called Overdrive. It's also sometimes called Libby. I'm going to explain the differences between those two services to you. Um, you'll hear these three interchangeable terms. Uh, one of them is Overdrive. And Overdrive is the name of the actual company that provides the collection of eBooks and uh, audiobooks and magazines to us. And uh, we buy the digital content directly from them and we get to choose which copies or which books we want to present to you and which formats, whether audio or ebook or both in a lot of cases. And um, so again, Overdrive is the parent company name. And I'm explaining this just so that these, these terms, which are we librarians often use interchangeably, don't confuse you. The other term that you'll hear in association with Overdrive is Libby. Um, Libby is Overdrive's newer app for mobile devices. They also have an older app called Overdrive, which if you know you happen to have been using the collection for a long time, you may have this app instead of Libby. We encourage all new users using mobile devices such as phones and tablets to get the Libby app rather than the older Overdrive app because the latter will at some point no longer be supported. So if you are using a phone or a tablet, uh, please get the Libby app. 
And finally, the third term for this collection that you may hear bandied around, and, and you'll see it in what I'm going to show you in just a minute, is the Front Range Downloadable Library. That is actually the name of the website where OverDrive hosts the content that we buy. And the reason it's not just called the Boulder Downloadable Collection or something like that is because we uh, are a consortium of seven li area libraries that have banded together to provide that content to you. And so it's not just Boulder Public Library, it's also Lafayette, Longmont, and some of the other libraries in this area. Uh, again, we're a group to do that. So what else do you need to know about OverDrive? What, what makes it unique and distinct from the other two collections that Gina will be talking about later? We do have borrow limits on OverDrive. Digital does not mean free and easy and you can get it whenever you want. Um, you can have eight checkouts at one time and you can have six holds at one time. And if you have an OverDrive, say, audiobook checked out, and we only own one copy in OverDrive of that audiobook, that means another user will need to put it on hold just as they would with a print book. So these are not unlimited checkouts. Um, it's one copy, one user. And the other thing that's unique about OverDrive is you can set your loan period. So as most of you know, our print books check out for three weeks with a couple of allowed renewals if nobody else puts holds on them. OverDrive functions the same way. And you can select whether you want the book for seven days, 14 days, or 21 days. And you can have, say, 21 days, which is the typical three-week checkout, as your default, or you can make your default shorter. And then you can also adjust that for individual checkouts. Like if you know a certain book is going to be a quick read, you can toggle that back to seven days just for that one book. So you have a lot of flexibility as a user of OverDrive. All right, but this is all very theoretical. So let me move on to sharing my slide or showing my screen. And um, then we can um, actually see how OverDrive works. All right, so what you're seeing on the screen now is the library homepage. Uh, which, as I mentioned, is where you start for all the e-collections. Now, the way that we're going to be demoing these collections today is as if you're using them on a laptop or desktop computer. The way they function in mobile devices is a bit different. You would use them directly through an app, but we can't demo that as easily uh, in this format. So today we're going to show everybody what it's like to use it on a computer screen. And if you have questions about how to use it on your particular device, you should ask those in the chat or the comments, or as I'll be highlighting later, you can set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment with a trained volunteer to learn how to use these collections on your particular device. So for now, let's operate under the assumption that we're all using our computer and we're all on the library homepage. Again, that's boulderlibrary.org. And the place to start for OverDrive and for all of our e-collections is the download and stream button in this big menu bar across the top. So I'm going to click on that. You'll notice that a sub menu opens and that you can search for material type. We're not gonna get into that, but if you do prefer audiobooks or eBooks, uh, or if you happen to be looking for videos, you can search just by that content and see all the places where we offer it. Or if you know, as we do today, that you're going to go straight to OverDrive, you can simply click on OverDrive. Now, as you can see, it's taken me to another screen for the Front Range Downloadable Library. Again, that's the name of the consortium that we buy these books through. And the sign-in area here is quite prominent. Now you can search this screen for books without signing in but you will see more content and you'll see more content particular to our library if you go ahead and sign in. So I'm going to do that. You'll notice that there is a select your library uh, down uh, a button here. And again, you see all the members of our consortium listed there. And uh, yes, you can have cards with more than one of those libraries and use OverDrive slash Libby through all of those libraries. We'll talk about that more later, but for now, since we are Boulder Public Library, we will choose Boulder Public Library and we'll enter our card number. And that's the 10 digit barcode on the back of your card. And it always starts with B00. So go ahead and 
and get that ready uh, for when, when the program is over and you are so excited to search for all of your books. And now we are logged into Boulder Public Library's uh, account in the Front Range Downloadable Library and you can search content. We do at Boulder Public Library try to buy more copies of the items that our patrons, our card holders, are particularly interested in. So if a book is doing really well among our patrons and we have the budget for it, we will try to add copies so that the hold lines for that particular book won't be as long. And that's another reason to always do your searching when you're logged in. Now, you'll notice across the top here, you know, very prominently some very popular books under new releases. And if you scroll down, you'll see some more carousels for audiobooks that are available now. You'll see magazines and you'll see, uh, you know, some special collections such as this is the We Need Diverse Books catalog. A couple of other features that I'll show you on this screen. You'll notice that for all of these really popular novels that are new releases, you'll see that they're labeled wait list here at the top of the book. That means that another patron has that book checked out. And so if you are interested in that book, you will need to place a hold. And I'll show you how to go about doing that in just a second. So what does that look like if the book is available? Well, if I scroll back down to our audio screen here, you'll see a green button that says available. So you know, you can check that book out right now and begin listening to it. Um, and again, I'll show you that in just a second. What else can you see from this screen? You can see the format of the book. And this is very important because if you are not an audiobook person, you will want to make sure that you get the ebook. And that is right here. And then the audiobook is a little headphone icon like this. So make sure when you are doing your own uh, checkouts that you are looking at the format that most interests you for that particular book. And sometimes that can go back and forth for people. You can have one book in one format and another book in a different format checked out at a time. All right, so now let's say that you are interested in a particular book and it's not one of the ones displayed here. You would wanna to go to the search icon here and then you'll see a little search window opens up here and you can type in the name of your book. We'll pick a very popular one, Where the Crawdads Sing. This comes up in a lot of our recommended reads. And it's my first hit here. You can see other titles pop up as well for the words where the, so it's a nice shortcut. You don't have to type the whole title and you can click on it. And then you'll see that we actually got four different results for that book. Um, you'll see the ebook, which is checked out with a wait list. Um, the audiobook is available and then we have it in Spanish as well. And that copy is available. So if you are interested in the ebook, the book that you read rather than listen to, you would click on place a hold and you'll see this little window opens up and you can enter the contact information where you would like to be notified when that book is available for you. And so I will enter mine and then you confirm it. And you simply click place a hold and you get a success screen and it tells you that you are number 12 on 44 copies. So uh, we and the other libraries in the consortium have indeed purchased many copies of this book. And that I will get an email at this email address when the title is available to borrow. And then it makes some suggestions for other books that I might be interested in. And I don't have to pay attention to any of that. Now let's say I, somebody gives me this book for my birthday. And so I don't need to have this on hold anymore. I can choose to go into my holds and they're very easy to cancel. You simply click remove and then it's gone and you're no longer on, um, on that. You don't have that title on hold. And since you only get eight holds at a time, it's important to manage that so that you really have what you really want on hold and you're not taking up space with a book that you no longer want. All right, so I'm going to go back to the homepage and now I'll show you a little bit about how to uh, check a book out that is available. So again, let's go down here to uh, some of these items that are available. Um, let's go into Clean Getaway by Nick Stone, which is available. And I'm gonna click borrow this time since this book is actually available. Now, remember that I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation that you can set your lending period. Um, this, this looks like a book for young people. 
And if I feel like I will be able to read it fairly quickly, I can change my borrowing period to seven days. And, um, or if I think it's gonna take me a while or I'm checking it out for a child who reads more slowly, you can choose three weeks. Um, looks like my default is 14 days or two weeks. And I can change that in my settings. I'll show you that in just a minute. I'm gonna go with the 14 days and I'm gonna click borrow. And again, I get a success screen. The book is now checked out to me, but I have not downloaded it yet. And one of the really nice features of OverDrive is that you can download books to read or listen to later without being connected to the internet. The checkout process, which I just went through, does require being on the internet, but the and, the, and so does downloading the book. But once it is downloaded uh, onto your computer or into the app on your mobile device, you no longer need to be connected. So you can take it with you on an airplane or listen to it in your car without worrying about being connected. So downloading it is very important. It's sort of like the difference between checking out the book a print book at the library and taking it home with you. The downloading is like taking it home with you. So on the screen now, you can see that I have some choices. If I am an Amazon Kindle user, OverDrive is our one ebook collection that is compatible with Kindle use. And so you can choose to read it on your Kindle. And for those of you out there who are listening and are interested in using it with your Kindle account, I'm not going to go into how to use that in this presentation today. We simply don't have enough time. But that is something you should feel free to ask about in the chat or the comments or contact us later to set up an appointment. You do need to have an Amazon account and the final pieces of the checkout are done via your Amazon account. So that's just something to keep in mind for right now. Um, you can also choose to read the book in your browser. That's an option if you will be connected to the internet. And then the final option is downloading the EPUB copy. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you'll notice that it, it appears over here in my downloads. And the first time that you do this, you want to associate how you are going to read that book with a particular app. And on your computer, you'll want to have the Libby or OverDrive apps or Adobe Digital Editions. Again, this is not something I'm going to go into during this presentation, but, um, but it is, it is a, a factor. And so again, if you want instruction on how to do that, um, you should go ahead and put a question in the chat or make an appointment with us. And again, we're going to show you the link to, to how to do that at the end of all of our presentation today. The final thing I'm going to show you um, with OverDrive is the account settings. So if you choose my account over here on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see these options, loans, holds, wish lists, rated titles, history, and then settings. Loans is where you see the items that you actually have checked out. And you can see right now where the Nick Stone book is that I have already checked out. And you'll see the options again for downloading or reading in the browser. I can go in and do that at any time. So if I have downloaded it and I'm, I've been reading it offline and I wanna continue reading in the browser, I can still do that. The other nice option here is an icon to return the book. So if you've if you've finished it and you're finished, you're finished with it and you don't need it anymore and you want to free it up for somebody else, you can choose return, hit return title. And now that book is available for somebody else to check out. And I now have all of my six checkout options back available to me. And I'm not using one of them for a book that I'm already finished with. So those are some of the things you can do from the loan screen. The hold screen is where your titles that you have on hold are listed. Again, you can have eight of those at a time. I don't have any holds right now, so nothing to show you there, but you can cancel holds from that screen if you no longer need them, as I showed you before. Now, what is the wish list? A wish list is where you would put books that you're not ready to put on hold yet, but you know you want to read at some point down the road. So I'm going to go back and show you how that might look. Um, let's say I want to read Lucy Foley's The Guest List. If you click on this little uh, ribbon here, that will add it to your wish list. And now when you go to the wish list under account, and again, the way I did that is right here, that book shows up on my wish list. It is available to borrow, so I have that information as well. And I can go ahead and borrow it when I am ready to get it without putting it on hold and eating up one of my hold slots for a book I'm not ready for. So the wish list is kind of handy for keeping track of your future reading as well. 
uh, rated titles I'm not going to go into. Uh, those are just books that I had given ratings to whether I like them or not. History is what I've read in the past. And so you can scroll through there and see some of the other things that you've checked out in the past. And perhaps you want to read them again, or you just needed a reminder of who the author was. Uh, there are a lot of reasons why you would want to check your history. And then the final item here is settings. And this is where you can change those default lending periods. For instance, I mentioned mine for eBooks and audiobooks was 14. I can change those to 21. Overdrive has some video in it, but we don't really buy very much at Boulder Library. Magazines, you can also change that. Magazines, I'm going to change to seven days because you know it doesn't typically take you as long to read a magazine. And you can also opt out of having your history displayed if you're, you have privacy concerns or you just don't want that information. You can uncheck this box and no longer have your history uh, available. You can also scope it to audience. Um, you can also scope it so it only shows books available for Kindle. Not all of them are. I would say most of them are available for Kindle. If you don't even want to see things that you cannot get in Kindle, you can check this box so that you won't, you know, you won't be fooled into thinking you have access to a book you really don't. And then there are some display options uh, for you know people with reading issues or if you want a high contrast view. So you have a lot of power over your reading experience that's accessed through those settings. When you are finished in OverDrive, you can log out of your account here as well. And then you just simply click on the front range downloadable library to get back to the home page. And I recommend exploring all of these other menus up here when you have time. Um, there's a lot of great content in there that we just don't have time to go over in this presentation today, but there, there's a lot of fun stuff in there. So I'm going to go ahead and log out. And again, this was a very quick overview. I'm very cognizant of, of how fast that probably seemed to you. I, um, I do recommend that you go in and play with this site. Please post your questions about OverDrive, Libby, Front Range Downloadable Library in the chat and comments. But for now, I'm going to turn the presentation back over to Gina, who's going to talk to you about some other fabulous collections that you have available to you through our library. All yours, Gina. Thank you. Thanks, Georgia. Uh, I'm going to talk about Hoopla and Canopy, and I'll address Hoopla first. Hoopla is another content provider that we have that provides um, different media types, ebooks, audiobooks, movies, TV shows, comics, and music. So it has a few different media types in OverDrive. Um, it also operates in a different licensing model than OverDrive. We don't go in and buy content for it like we do in OverDrive. Um, it's just an aggregate of content that the publisher, the distributor gives us. And it is also streaming or downloadable to a mobile device for offline viewing. Um, you'll need to go to your app store to get um, the Android or, or iPhone app. Um, and it's simultaneous use, which means theoretically that 100 people can be reading the same ebook or listening to the same audiobook at the same time. So there's no need to place a hold um, and there's no wait time. But the caveat with that is that it's a what's called a pay per play licensing model for the library, which means um, we pay each use. And that can be really expensive for us. So we have to put a budget cap in place that's distributed over every day of the month. And you might get a message that says something like the library's budget cap has been reached for the day. And that resets at midnight um, every day. So it's a, not like your borrow limit has been reached. It's that the library's money has been spent for that day. We have to have a budget cap in place because it's very popular and very expensive. So the borrowing limits that we allow for Hoopla are four per month. That's four of any format per month. And your loan limits are also set by Hoopla, not by yourself in, as an overdrive. So the ebooks, comics, and audio are a three week loan. Movies and TV shows are three days. And music is two weeks. So you'll want to be aware of these differences between the Hoopla content and the overdrive content. And I'll give you a brief demo and share my screen um, on how to access Hoopla. Oops. So Hoopla is found under the download and stream navigation from the home page. 
if you click into it, because Hoopla is four different formats, it's going to be in both audiobooks, ebooks, music, and videos, or you can go directly to it um, through the favorite collection link. If you click into the audiobook, um, you'll see that it's just below the OverDrive content, and we have quick links to the apps here. And there's also a link to help, and it will tell you the borrowing limits for the particular format that you had clicked into. And there's a little bit more about that daily budget limit that you might encounter, which is usually encountered late afternoon, or if it's in the beginning of the month, it might be earlier in the day because all, all of our power users go in and, and get their content. If you click into Hoopla, it's going to um, tell you it's brought to you by the Boulder Public Library. And it auto logged me in. So I'm going to just log out real quickly to show you what it would look like as a first, um, the first time you access it. You'll want to use this Get Started Today link and create a Hoopla account. So you need more than just your library card with Hoopla and Canopy. You actually have to set up an account with an email address and a password. And you'll want to be a good digital citizen and read the terms and conditions and the privacy policy. Agree to those and create your Hoopla account. Once you've created your Hoopla account, you can log in and remember yourself on if it's a personal device or personal computer that you're on. And I'll just briefly go over the navigation of Hoopla, which is across the top here. Um, your My Hoopla is basically your personalized um, Hoopla account. It's where you show the currently borrowed titles, any favorites that you've tagged, and then a borrowing history. Um, you can browse for content by specific devices, just as you can in OverDrive. So if you're only interested in eBooks or music, you can select that and it'll take you just to that kind of content. You can also put a filter on your search terms before you search. If you're just wanting to search audiobooks with a search term, you can just select, drop that down and select the media that you would you prefer. Hoopla also has a kids mode. So if you have grandkids or children that you'll be accessing the content with, you can turn that on and it'll just show you age appropriate content for children. The little gear icon here on the far right is where you're going to log into your, your settings. And this is where you would um, turn on or off your borrowing history, your kids mode, or if you want to receive emails from Hoopla. Your library is where you're associating with Boulder Public Library and a the associated card number. And here's where you would change that card number should you ever lose your card and have to get a new one. Um, your email also, if your email changes, you'll want to update that in Hoopla. And should you need to reset your password if it's been compromised or you just need to change it. This is all done under the settings, um, settings pages, which is under that gear icon. So if we go back to my Hoopla homepage, Hoopla presents uh, um, your recently borrowed and recommended and favorites and popular audiobooks just in those carousels of content like OverDrive. So you can easily browse through the, the, the content that Hoopla provides to you. You can also just choose to search. Um, if you're after a particular author, and then it'll show you the that author's content. And you can browse until you see something that interests you. And again, like OverDrive, it shows you the format type, audiobook, ebook. If you haven't put any filters on, it's going to show you both. If you see something that you're interested in, you can click on the cover tile and read more about these um, the book and the summary information on it. And you can choose to borrow it from this page if you'd like. It tells you it's available for the three-week checkout after you borrowed it. And it, it's available for streaming and downloading to mobile devices. If you're not so interested in borrowing it at this time, you can just click on the little heart icon in the upper right. And that'll favorite the title for you. And then it'll appear in your favorites under My Hoopla. So it's often good to just create a lot of content in your favorites so that you have something like always ready to, to listen to or, or read or listen, um, watch. And from your favorites, you can also just click again into the tile and borrow the content. And then it'll tell you again, are you sure you want to borrow it? Um, and once you have, the, have it borrowed and checked out, it'll tell you the expiry date. 
um, and you can stream it to your browser or download it. And uh, the borrow button has now changed to a read button, and I believe it changes to a download button if you're on a mobile device. You can also return it early, but that doesn't really free up anything. It, you still are only limited to four um, borrows per month in Hoopla. If you read, um, it should just set up your ebook and allow you to read it right there in the browser. Oops. So once you, you want to know also where the help pages are in the um, in Hoopla, and they're found at the bottom of the page. If you click into help, you can um, access, you know, error messages you might get, how to Hoopla basics, iOS basics, and troubleshooting things. So this is a really good page to know about, and it's found at the bottom of the page. You can also go into the, um, when you're, when you're searching, you can look for um, particular genres or um, along the left, the formats here, user ratings, release date, data added, et cetera. So there's ways to filter it. You can also sort your search by popularity or different, you know, date added, user ratings, et cetera. Um, so that's a quick overview of um, Hoopla. And I'm going to give you now a quick uh, overview of the canopy. So canopy is um, streaming videos only. Um, it does include movies, documentaries, great courses, videos, and educational films. Um, it's also um, a streaming format only, which means you can't download it to view it offline, like you can Hoopla or Overdrive. Um, so you'll always have to have that browser connection. Um, Canopy is also a pay per play licensing model, which means that uh, we only pay, the library pays for the content. We don't, uh, at the time of use, and we don't go in and, and buy it directly. So we do have to put a borrowing limit on Canopy as well, which is five videos per month that you're allowed um, per account. And the, the loan limit that Canopy has instituted is a two-day period to watch your videos. So if you borrow something, you only have the 48 hours, two days to watch it. Um, while it's checked out to you, then it will expire and you won't be able to access it anymore. Um, there's two exceptions to the borrowing limits, and those are the great courses and Canopy for Kids, which allow um, the great courses because they're uh, episodic series. You're allowed to watch as many videos in the great course checkout that um, you can within the month's time. And the same for Canopy for Kids. If you decide to um, choose a kid's content, um, you can watch unlimited plays for the kids' movies. Um, one thing, one caveat I wanted to warn you about Canopy is, is it's very easy to unintentionally check out or play a video that will then count against your five for the month because uh, it's you're used to clicking around in YouTube and click that play button. But um, if you click the play button, it will check it out to you and, and count down your um, five. So you want to be very intentional when you're browsing Canopy. And I'll show you in a, when I demo it how to add things to your watch list or, or use the trailers to you know, ascertain your interest in the movie if you want to watch it. Um, so with that being said, I'll um, share my screen and show you a little bit demo of Canopy. So Canopy is also found, download and stream on the home page. And since we um, know all we want to go in there, we're going to go in right into Canopy streaming. And again, it's logging me in um, directly. So I'm going to log out and just show you what the home screen will look like. Um, it does kind of, it might look a little different here because I've been 
practicing with this, but you want to just add your library card so you see it put me in step three of four. It would actually be step one of four for the first time you access it. So it will look a little bit differently. And just setting up your email and your password and then adding your library um, card to your account. Once you've created your account, you can log in. And if you're on a personal device, you can um, remember that. And I'll show you a little bit of the navigation at the top. So the canopy defaults to just these carousels of content, newly added documentaries, cinema, Oscar winners, et cetera. It's a long, long, long page full of content. And then they have a little banner where you can click through on the popular titles. Um, your search option is right there. You can browse content, browsing movies by, by category, war in action or horror. Um, browse documentaries or little, the educational films are also in here and some staff picks. Um, you can also go to Canopy for Kids. That's where the kids content is. And under your name is where you're going to find your personalization and your dashboard and um, your preferences here. So this is again, as your dashboard is where you're going to edit your profile should your email change or you want to update um, a password. You can also edit your library card here. Should that change, you want to update it in Canopy. And it also tell you how many um, credits you have left and anything that's in your watch list is also here under my watch list. So if you go back to Canopy homepage and you want to just browse those rivers of content in the carousels, you can click into maybe the Oscar winners that has um, see what's what's appealing to you and from here is where you want to be want to make sure that you're not clicking this watch button here because that's going to unless you really want to watch it is that's going to count down your play credits instead you would maybe click on the cover tile to find out more about this movie and it'll give you a little summary of it that you can be, might be interested in watching. And a lot of the movies now have trailers, which is pretty new. So you can also, they don't um, count against your play credits. So you can usually watch the trailer if this little button is appearing here. And you might also add it to your, your list. So once you've added it to your list, it will be under your name and your watch list. And this is a better way to, um, to grab the content that you might be interested in learning more about the movie before you actually watch it um, to count down your play credits. And from your watch list is where you can watch now. And just click play. And that should start playing in the browser. And again, this is uh, just a reminder that Canopy is streaming only. It doesn't um, download to mobile devices. Um, so that's it for the brief overview of Canopy. If you have any questions, you can add them to the chat or contact the library at a later date. And we'd be happy to tell you more about these, these collections. Thank you, Gina. Every time Gina demos Canopy, I get excited about it. And I wish I had more time to just watch movies all the time. Uh, Gina, I wanted to ask you, um, if I have a smart TV, can I use Hoopla or Canopy videos and hook them up with that somehow? Yes, um, you can do, it works with, I'll show my screen here. If at, at the bottom of Canopy, um, oops. At the bottom in the footer is the links to all the um, Android TV, Apple TV, Roku, Fire TV. These will all tell you more about how to get started with the smart television TV shows and um, set them up. You can also, um, I think you're going to show the virtual tech help that um, people can access if they have trouble getting set up with those. Thank you very much. I just wanted to make sure that we didn't neglect to talk about that feature. All right, well, now it's time for us to answer some of your questions. So uh, what have you got for us? Uh, what 
what questions were prompted by these overviews of these great products? Let's see. You know, it occurs to me as I'm talking that Gina was kind enough to show you where you find help with, um, ah, and it looks like somebody did have a question. Does Overdrive have a help page like Hoopla? And I meant to show you that and I neglected to do that. So let me show that right now. I've shared my screen again. And so let's say that you're logged into Overdrive and you have a quick question about something related to your device or a particular book, or you're having a problem, where would you go for help? Overdrive's help link is up here in the upper right-hand corner. You simply click that and it's a very robust help site. It's, uh, it's improved a lot over the years. We've been longtime Overdrive customers and it's really great now. You can either get started or you can search by device. And you see here when I hover over devices that um, a whole list of devices that are compatible with Overdrive appear. Um, they also have videos you can watch if you're more of a visual learner on how to, on how to use your device or, or use a feature of Overdrive. And when you're just on the homepage, you can actually type in a question or a keyword and it'll, it'll find all the videos and, and information that on that topic for you. So when I typed in Kindle, I got 45 article hits. Why can't I read my Kindle book on my Kindle or Kindle reading app? So it starts out with the most commonly accessed basic question. And if, um, if you click through, you'll see an article on that topic. It often includes links to other, other Q and A or demo that might help you negotiate that question. And of course, we will be showing you how you can get more in-person help from us if this help screen proves inadequate. So that is, uh, that is where Overdrive's help screen is located. So what other questions have we got? Question from the chat, uh, Gina, regarding Hoopla, do you have to do something more than click read to download it? And can you read Hoopla books offline as well? Yes, you can. Um, you'll want to get the app on your mobile device. It only downloads to mobile devices. So you can stream it only on a, lap, a desktop or a laptop, but you'll have to get the your iOS or your Android app or your Kindle Fire app um, in order to download the book. And I believe once you access the um, content, when you're accessing Hoopla from your app, that button will not say read, it will say download. Okay. And then you would download it and you'll see it um, progress before, uh, well, it's um, downloading to your device and then it'll be on your device. Um, and you can, don't have to be connected to the internet to read it or listen to it or watch it. Excellent. Um, Amy has a question. Do you have to read Hoopla in your browser or can it be downloaded to other devices? I, I think you pretty much answered that. Any other nuances to go with that question? No, I would just explore the help pages on Hoopla, um, which are found in the footer at the bottom of the Hoopla pages. And that'll, though there are buttons for just like Overdrive, it has extensive help um, information about how specific to your device. Okay, and um, before we move on to the next question about magazines, um, just really quick, um, Gina, do you have any you know, hacks or any advice for how to best get around the uh, daily borrowing cap certain times of day or? Well, <laughs> we tell people to, um, if you're a night owl uh, up after midnight or you're an early riser, those are the best times to check out the material. You don't have to necessarily watch it or listen to it, um, but you do want to borrow it at the time. Um, those are probably the the least times that people are in there borrowing. What ha tends to happen with Hoopla is that we get those power users which um, go in the first week of the new month and they get all their four borrows. And so we hit that budget cap earlier in the first week of the month, um, earlier in the day during that time than we do in the middle of the month. Um, but right. again, early mornings or late night after midnight when the budget resets are the best times to borrow. Okay. Of course, we're telling everyone that, so. <laughs> <laughs> going in there. So, 12.01 or as early in the morning as possible is probably the best time for that. Right. Okay. 
All right. So Marty has a great question, and this is my bad. Did you cover magazines or did I miss that? Um, we meant to cover magazines and it was on me. So let me go in and do that now. Uh, those of you who have been around and used these collections for a while know that we used to get our magazines through uh, what was formerly called Zinio, then it became RB Digital Magazines, and then that was acquired by Overdrive. So now uh, magazines are accessed through the same um, Overdrive interface that I showed before. And let me share my screen again, and I'll demo that very quickly because uh, I, meant to, I meant to show you that before. So if you go into Overdrive, and uh, I'm already logged in, you'll notice when you scroll down that you can see read a magazine. And this is uh, relatively new in Overdrive. And so you will get your magazines now through them. And it works, uh, the interface as you see looks a lot like what I showed you for books. Um, if you want a particular magazine, I'm gonna choose The Economist. You'll notice that they say, all of them say available. You can also click see all and you can then see all the, the magazines that we offer. And there's some great stuff in here. The titles are amazing. Um, you get popular culture magazines like us. You get more serious news publications like The Economist, The New Yorker. I know a lot of folks in Boulder swear by The New Yorker and it's, it's, uh, it's their source for some more in-depth reading. It's in there, it's free with your library card. Um, for those of you who like to cook, we have Cooks Illustrated. I could just go on and on about all the great magazine content that's in there. Um, so let me go ahead and, and show you how this works. Again, it, you'll see the format here for magazine and uh, you'll see the most recent issue date. And uh, if you want to read the magazine, you just simply click borrow. And uh, again, because I set my settings for magazines to seven days, that's what it comes up with. And I feel like I can probably go through Bon Appetit in seven days. So I click borrow. And you'll notice here, this is one difference between magazines and books. You can only read these in the browser. So I will choose that option to read in the browser. And a very nice interface comes up where I have my magazine here and I simply scroll through it and it looks just like the print magazine will look in, um, you know, should you pick it up and, and start leafing through it at your newsstand. So that in a nutshell is how you borrow magazines. Um, if, you'll notice if you go to loans that they do appear there and you can see the expiration date for those and um, you can return them early just like you do other things. And so I'll go ahead and return this. I also noticed while I had that magazine checked out that it did not um, count against my checkout limits. Gina, is that correct? Having a magazine out does not take, out, take up one of my six checkouts? That's correct. Okay, so that's another nice feature. You can still have six books out or you know, a mix of audiobooks and, uh, and, and regular uh, or eBooks and still also read magazines. So that is the answer to your question, Marty. Thank you very much for, for bringing that up. Okay, Karen asks, um, I have a Longmont library card. Can I access these Boulder Public Library services with it or do I need a separate card? Um, there's sort of two questions in there, and Gina, jump in if I if I misspeak at all. Um, Longmont is also a member of the Front Range Downloadable Library, so you can log into that using your Longmont card. They may choose to buy different titles than we do. Um, your holds on books in Overdrive with your Longmont card, you will be able to access our copies, but not um, special copies that we buy through Overdrive only for Boulder card holders. Um, and as a county resident, you can also have both cards. So you could have one with us and one with Longmont, log in with either card through the interface that I showed you, and um, thereby boost the number of items that you can have checked out. Uh, so that's a, a kind of an overdrive hack. Anything you'd add to that question, Gina? No, that's about it. I'd say that um, we don't buy separate as a consortium, we buy uh, everything together. So the consortium agrees that we'll buy any copy is always a first copy that's shared for the consortium. What What is new is that we can now buy multiple copies of, for holds fulfillment for our patrons, much like we do in our print um, collection where the copies that we buy, the extra copies that we buy for our patrons go to our patrons first on the hold list. Um, so that's the same with that's now true in Overdrive collection. So over, um, Boulder might buy, 
you know, 10 more copies of a popular title and their copies, those copies will go to Boulder patron card holders first on the hold list. Just to continue with Karen's question, can she access Hoopla or Canopy with her Longmont card or does she definitely need a Boulder card for those? Definitely needs a Boulder card. That's not a shared collection. It's Boulder pays for that alone. But I believe um, one of several of the other regional libraries do have Hoopla and Canopy. And you can bug them to buy it if you're really interested. <laughs> right into them. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, Kate asks, outside of magazines, what is the difference or value of Overdrive versus Hoopla for materials? Uh, when do you recommend using one over the other? That's a really good question. I, My answer to that, and this may no longer be correct, again, Gina, correct me, I, I, I tend to find more popular materials, more current materials in Overdrive than Hoopla as far as books go. Um, is, yep. that, is that really still true though? Yeah, and that's because we can buy for it. So. Overdrive is also an older company uh, distributor than Hoopla or Canopy, so they have long-standing relationships with the publishers. Um, they're able to get that popular new content right away for the as an ebook or an audiobook, and because we can buy it, um, we have a say in how many copies we want for it. So popular and new releases, I would definitely say Overdrive is the place to go. Can and again. Oh, sorry, Hoopla and Canopy, we don't have any say in what that content is given to us. It just comes to us in a package. Okay. Um, and just to piggyback on that, as far as popular movies go in Canopy, uh, that's a little bit different, isn't it? And, and could you kind yeah, of we're not going to find, you know, first run releases and, and new Oscar winners there yet. Um, it's generally more of a backlist um, content. But that being said, Canopy has a terrific content. I mean, it's just it's just thousands of films that you'd like to see from classic. To, it's just really worth exploring. It's almost like dream time for those of us who don't really have enough time <laughs> to watch movies. <laughs> uh, Dorothy asks uh, if we mentioned how to download movies to a portable device. I think Gina did mention this. Um, Canopy is streaming only. Um, so if you're going to watch Canopy, you do have to be connected to the internet. Does it work with mobile devices at all? Even if they're connected to the internet, can you watch on your mobile device? I believe so, as long as it's an internet connection. But you can't download the content. On our Hoopla movies, you can download th those videos because to a mobile device, but streaming only on a desktop or laptop. And that's yeah, so mainly because of digital rights. Um, the apps protect the, the supplier. And I know Overdrive offers video, but as I believe I mentioned, we do not buy video through Overdrive. Yeah, there's a very, very small, um, very, very few videos in Overdrive, but there are some. Okay, um, Patricia has a great question. Uh, can you speak to data privacy concerns on that front? Is Overdrive better than Hoopla or vice versa? Or is it fairly equivalent? Um, how do they take care of our privacy? That That's a great question. I, I actually have to research that one. That is a question. And as I mentioned when I was demoing, you want it to be a good digital citizen. It's really the onus is on you as the content uh, consumer to read those terms of use and the privacy policies for any in-depth concerns you might have or reach out to Hoopla or Canopy or Overdrive directly if you have a specific concern. Um, we you know, as librarians, we struggle and we want to protect privacy, but we also want to be able to offer these great services, um, but we can't really be the gatekeepers of it. Um, so that's between you and accepting the terms of use of the Hoopla, Canopy and Overdrive. I will say that uh, as far as your library card information goes, we do not share that um, on our end. And uh, I don't think the vendors are allowed to share that. No, information. no, they don't. So at least you can you can know as insofar as your your card history with us goes, that is absolutely protected. We're we're quite um, um, how should I say militant about privacy as librarians. Yeah, and we wouldn't sign up with these companies if they in any way shared library card information. Okay. Uh, Marty asks about Prospector. Um, Prospector is our, of course, our beloved print consortium that due to COVID-19 financial concerns, we had to drop out of hopefully temporarily. 
we are well aware of our patrons' uh, zeal for Prospector. We as staff members are also zealous about it. We do hope to get it back, but it will depend on the economic recovery from COVID and the subsequent recovery of our budget. Uh, fingers crossed that Prospector will be back. Um, it doesn't affect our digital subscriptions at all. So um, Marty, uh, we're with you. We want it back. Uh, we wish we had more we could say about the timing, but we just can't right now. Okay, any other questions? This is, uh, we've got about four minutes left in our program and I, I do have some wrap up remarks that I wanted to make. Um, to start out with, for those of you who were not able to get your questions answered, um, I want to show you where you can go to get those answered. And again, uh, the source for this is as always the library homepage. Um, if you have questions about how to use any of the services that Gina and I discussed today on your own personal device, we would encourage you to make an appointment for our virtual tech help. And you can find the form for that under our services menu, which is right here. Um, if you go down to virtual tech help and click this link, it will take you to a form where you can make a one-on-one -on -one appointment, again, for free, a virtual help session with a trained volunteer. And let me make that a little bit bigger for you guys. Um, You'll notice the parameters here. You do have to be in Boulder County for this. If you're not in Boulder County, I suggest you call your local library. Many libraries offer services like this. And you'll enter your, your personal information. And just click here that you would like help borrowing and using eBooks or audiobooks um, or viewing video. The volunteers do prefer that you keep to one question or, or you know, sort of two related questions for a session. It just helps organize the time better. And then once you've submitted the form, which is easy again at the bottom, and you can elaborate on your question here, the volunteer will contact you to set up a time and a platform that's mutually agreeable for you. A lot of the volunteers like to use Zoom for this. If you're not comfortable with that, there is a phone call only option. Uh, you can choose that. Um, you can also ask your volunteer to help out with Zoom if you are willing to give it a shot. Um, and so, for all of your you know, more personally tailored questions, this is a great service and we, uh, we highly recommend using it. Um, we also, again, going back to the library homepage, your gateway to all good things is the library homepage. If you go to services again, you'll see that we have a, an online Q&A, Ask a Librarian, where you can submit a question in writing to uh, library staff and they will get back to you in writing usually the same day depending on the complexity of the question. We try to get back to these uh, questions as quickly as we can. And so if, you, if that's a preferred format for you, you can also send your questions in there. You'll see we do have some questions already loaded in there and some of them do have to do with the digital services we discussed today. Um, that prospector question is obviously there as well. And then we also have our phone number uh, where you can contact us at any time the library is open and speak to a staff person. Um, you can text us questions. And then again, here's the submit a question directly where you can fill out a form and send your question in. So I definitely uh, commend that site to you as well. Um, and then I don't have time to go into a lot of detail on these services, but for those of you who would like some more basic tech help, if you go to our lifelong learning menu and to the teach yourself tech page, We've linked a lot of a good video and uh, basic questions related to topics like your, your computer, your email and internet, uh, how to deal with jobs and the, the new online world for job search, social media sites. And then we do have some options in Spanish as well. So uh, feel free to go in and explore the content that we've linked there, you know, basics on Zoom, basics on email and, uh, and you may get some questions answered there as well uh, from the comfort of your own home. All right, well, we are about out of time. I see T minus one minute on the screen. I, I wanted to again thank uh, Gina, of course, and my coworkers, Julian and Anne behind the scenes. Thanks to over Older Adult Services for their help promoting this program and for helping us uh, come up with the idea. And finally, of course, thanks again to the Library Foundation. This video is being recorded and it will be available later for those of you who are not able to view in person. And uh, I wanna thank everybody who did tune in and watch us today. We love being your librarians. We love being your library. 
If you have any suggestions for content for any of these platforms, please send them to us. And thank you very much. We look forward to answering more of your questions down the road. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.